Welcome to Cute eLearning Channel. In this lecture, we will discuss the thermal fatigue. Description of damage. Thermal fatigue is the result of cyclic stresses caused by variations in temperature. Damage is in the form of cracking that may occur anywhere in a metallic component where relative movement or differential expansion is constrained during repeated thermal cycling. Affected materials All materials of construction Critical factors Key factors affecting thermal fatigue are the magnitude of the temperature swing and the frequency. Number of thermal cycles per second or minute or day, etc. Time to failure is a function of the magnitude of the cyclic stress and the number of cycles and decreases with increasing stress and increasing frequency. As a reasonable rule of thumb, cracking may be suspected if the temperature swings exceed about 200 degrees Fahrenheit to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Startup and shutdown of equipment can increase the susceptibility to thermal fatigue. Damage is also promoted by rapid changes in surface temperature that result in a thermal gradient through the thickness or along the length of a component. Notches, such as the toe of a weld, and sharp corners, such as the intersection of a nozzle with a vessel shell, and other stress concentrations may serve as initiation sites. Affected units or equipment Examples include the mix points of hot and cold streams such as hydrogen mix points in hydro processing units and locations where condensate comes in contact with steam systems such as the superheating or a temperating equipment as illustrated in figures thermal fatigue of 304 l stainless at mix point in the bfw preheater bypass line and thermal fatigue cracks on the inside of a heavy wall. Stainless steel pipe downstream of a cooler. Hydrogen injection into a hot hydrocarbon line. Thermal fatigue can also occur on coke drum skirts, where stresses are promoted by a variation in temperature between the drum and skirt. In steam generating equipment, the most common locations are at rigid attachments between neighboring tubes in the superheater and reheater. Steam actuated soot blowers may cause thermal fatigue damage if the first steam exiting the soot blower nozzle contains condensate. as illustrated in figures. Bulging in a skirt of a coke drum due to thermal cycling from coker operation and thermal fatigue cracking associated with bulged skirt shown in left figure. Appearance or morphology of damage Thermal fatigue cracks propagate 
transverse to the stress and they are usually dagger shaped, transgranular, and oxide filled, as illustrated in figures. In a carbon steel sample, metallographic section through a thermal fatigue crack indicates origin at the toe of an attachment weld. And older cracks fill with oxide may stop and restart. Water in soot blowers may lead to a crazing pattern. The predominant cracks will be circumferential and the minor cracks will be axia as illustrated in figures metallographic cross section of a superheated steam outlet line that failed from thermal fatigue and photomicrograph of the same failed superheated steam outlet line shown in left figure prevention mitigation thermal fatigue is best prevented through design and operation to minimize thermal stresses and thermal cycling several methods of prevention apply depending on the application designs that incorporate reduction of stress concentrators blend grinding of weld profiles and smooth transitions should be used controlled rates of heating and cooling during startup and shutdown of equipment can lower stresses differential thermal expansion between adjoining components of dissimilar materials should be considered Designs should incorporate sufficient flexibility to accommodate differential expansion. In steam generating equipment, slip spacers should, slip and rigid attachments should be avoided. Drain lines should be provided on soot blowers to prevent condensate in the first portion of the soot blowing cycle. In some cases, a liner or sleeve may be installed to prevent a colder liquid from contacting the hotter pressure boundary wall. Inspection and monitoring. Temperature monitoring can be performed by installing thermocouples where practical on components with thick sections or that are otherwise susceptible to thermal fatigue cracking. Acoustic emission testing can be used for continuous monitoring or monitoring during thermal transitions to detect mechanical energy released from cracks when strain values are elevated. NDE methods used to detect surface breaking cracks using same side inspection include liquid penetrant testing, magnetic particle testing, wet fluorescent magnetic particle testing, eddy current testing, alternating current field measurement, and electromagnetic acoustic transducer. NDE methods used to detect surface breaking cracks using opposite side inspection and or areas that are same side but not accessible include angle beam ultrasonic testing shear wave ultrasonic testing or phased array ultrasonic testing and time of flight diffraction Related mechanisms to thermal fatigue are Mechanical fatigue 
corrosion fatigue and dissimilar metal weld cracking. Thermal fatigue summary. Description. Thermal fatigue is the result of cyclic stresses caused by variations in temperature. Thermal fatigue cracks propagate transverse to the stress and they are usually dagger shaped, transgranular and oxide filled. Temperature range. Operation temperature. Temperature swings exceeds about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Affected metallurgy. All materials of construction. Prevention. Design and operation to minimize thermal stress and cycling. Inspection methods. Temperature monitoring. Acoustic emission for continuous monitoring. For surface cracking liquid penetrant testing, magnetic particle testing, wet fluorescent magnetic particle testing, eddy current testing, alternating current field measurement, and electromagnetic acoustic transducer are effective methods of inspection. For internal cracking, external angle beam ultrasonic testing, shear wave ultrasonic testing or phased array ultrasonic testing and time of flight diffraction practice time question number one differential expansion in bimetallic welds can give rise to Answer is B. Question number two. Which of the following combination will cause higher stress due to thermal expansion? Answer is A. Question number three. Which the following causes of thermal fatigue? Answer is C. Question number four. How thermal fatigue morphology of damage? Answer is A. Question number five. Convection section soot blowers that have steam supplies without a steam trap, condensate drain, can cause. Answer is B. This lecture is prepared by Samir Saad and this is his profile. Thanks a lot for watching and please waiting us for the next lecture.